A sophomore attending Korea International School, Jeju in South Korea, I'm here to help you on your AP Psychology exam in May by giving you a video lecture through the units 1 through 14 and then going through all the key concepts and some MCQs and FQs in order to help you to be well prepared for the AP Psych exam. Now if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get to it. Now, Unit 1 knows. So today we're going to look at Unit 1, and then we're going to review some important names and important concepts, and also some important graphs that you need to remember in order to do well and get a 5 on your exams. So starting with Module 1, Psychology is History. So, the concept of pre-scientific psychology was first provided by Socrates and Plato. They believed that knowledge was innate, and then people can know all principles through logic. They also believe that mind and body are distinct and separate. They had a theory that mind survives death, which means that even after death, the mind will survive, and then since the mind and body are distinct, even after death, your mind will remain, and then that knowledge will pass down. Aristotle, in the meantime, believed that knowledge came from memory and experience. So this is closer to empiricism, this is closer to what we believe in the status quo within our current society, right? Aristotle believed that, logically, that memory and experience is the pre-stage that comes before achieving a knowledge. Apart from Socrates and Plato, who believed in souls and mind and body. Now, Descartes. In the 1600s, this is when modern science begins. And Descartes agreed with Socrates and Plato. He believed that the brain's cavities, they contained animal spirits, which take the form of fluids, and he believed that they form memories. Francis Bacon, on the other hand, is the found, one of the founders of modern science, and he contributed to empiricism, and empiricism is an idea of focusing on current scientific concepts and focusing on logic, rather than religious theories, or some superstitious theories. John Locke also believed that, on top of Bacon's form of empiricism, he said that knowledge comes from experience, such as the same idea as Aristotle, so that scientists, they should observe and experiment about how experience contributes to acquiring knowledge. And at this point, psychological science is born. Wallen Wundt, he provided the first psychology lab ever. He did a lab about the reaction time to figure out atoms building blocks of the mind being formed. He was a structuralist and he used introspection, which is recording one's inner thoughts and sensations to reveal the structure of human mind. This is really important to remember because in the AP psych test you will take in May, they will ask you if which which concept did Willem want believed in, and then you'll have to answer that he was a structuralist and used introspection. Edward Tischner was also a structuralist, and he was a once student. William James was also influenced by Darwin. William James was a functionalist, and he explored how mental and behavioral processes function and help the organism to adapt and survive. He also wrote a textbook about it, and that was the first textbook ever in a psychology's history. Mary Elton Calkins is also an important woman that you should remember. She was the first female to achieve a PhD in psychology. However, her degree was denied by Harvard. This was because of the female and male inequity that took place at that time. Now, Margaret Floyd Washburn was the first female PhD in psychology. So she achieved the first female PhD in psychology. My apologies, Marilyn Calkins almost achieved the first female PhD. But however, on the AP Psych test that you'll take in May, uh, when the MCQ asks you who was the first female to achieve a PhD in psychology, Marilyn Calkins will be the correct answer anyways. Now, back to Margaret Floyd Washburn. She, was, she is to be remembered as the first APA female president. So these names and like what did they do to contribute to the history of psychology is really important to remember because on the MCQs, you will be required to match the correct names and the correct contributions and their theories. 
Now on to experimental psychology. This is the study of behavior and thinking using the experimental method. So this is about using experiments to study psychology. This led to the psychological science developing. And then the number one, the almost number one famous psychology that you need, psychologist that you need to remember in the history of psychological science is John B. Watson. So he was a behaviorist. And he looked at only behaviors because it was more objective and observable than introspection. So this was a method of looking at mental processes. And then he talked about how behaviors were sought to be learned from conditioning. Conditioning is an important concept that you need to remember for later chapters to come. You will learn about operant conditioning, classical conditioning, and how conditioning impacts individuals as they are exposed to a certain neutral stimulus but then the neutral stimulus gets changed into a conditioned stimulus and then your response will be a conditioned response that comes from the conditioned stimulus. There are those really interesting concepts in later chapters, so please check, check out later videos and then please uh, be ready for those concepts to come. Now back to chapter 1. B.F. Skinner was also a behaviorist. Sigmund Freud, and then he was a man who started the Freudian psychology and then the psychoanalysis theory. So he believed in unconscious conflicts from childhood leading to behaviors. So unconscious conflicts in childhood are two key words that you need to remember for Sigmund Freud. Uh, in later chapters as well, and even in the AP Psych Test in May, you will have to match that unconscious conflicts, number one, and number two, childhood, are two key words that describe Sigmund Freud. So in an MCQ question or an FRQ question, when you see unconscious conflicts in childhood, those two words, they indicate the concept of a psychoanalysis and who provided the first psychoanalysis theory, the name is Sigmund Freud. Now, moving on to the next person, Carl Rogers. So he was a humanistic psychologist. So this is another branch of psychology. And he looked at how to improve the growth potential of people. And then he talked about how self-actualization and our need for love and acceptance is important. He felt that psychoanalysis was too limiting, and then he believed that through self-actualization, people will be able to learn who they really are, and then meet up their fullest potentials to express themselves, and then uh, perform with the best self of themselves. So humanistic kind of refers to like the concept of believing in oneself a lot, and then how one can develop their abilities by believing in them, and then actually by achieving them, one will be able to be self-actualized, and then become a better person and a better performer in whatever they do. Carl Rogers, although it is not mentioned in notes right now, you might want to take the notes here. Carl Rogers was one who talked about unconditional positive regard. So unconditional positive regard refers to the concept of how every people, not necessarily innately kind to the people, but there is a concept in which some people, to some types of people, they express love and they express the feeling of wanting to help out of like natural, pure intentions without even receiving any kind of incentives because they have an unconditional positive regard of wanting to help that person. That will come in later chapters as well. For now, you don't need to know about that in chapter 1. Next, Abraham Maslow was also a humanistic psychologist, and then he felt that psychoanalysis was still limiting as well. And then he was a man who actually talked about self-actualization and then he made a self-actualization pyramid where the concepts of like self-security and then like psychosocial factors and then those kind of factors, they lead up to a pyramid later on in later chapters. And then he talked about how at the top there's self-actualization and then by going through all the needs such as safety and food and being be and feeling belonging within a certain community and then by achieving self-actualization, one will be able to reach your fullest potential and become a better human. Now, cognitive psychology is about how cognition has to do with knowledge, perception, thinking, and this includes memory and language. The overall trend in psychology is that, early on, many psychologists focused on mental processes. But then from 1920 to 1960, they focused on behavior. This is when behaviorism arrived. And for behaviorists, there are B.F. Skinner and John Watson. And then in 1960 onwards, they focused on cognition. So this was called the Cognitive Revolution. 
and then, later on, the modern psychology that encoded both behavior and mental processes, they arrived, and that is what the current AP psychologists believe in. But you don't need to know about that, you only need to know about the behavior and the concepts and who the cognition psychologists were to prepare well for the AP psych exam, so please don't be intimidated by who or what the modern psychology believes in. Anyway, moving on. So psychology is a science of behavior and mental processes, and what one does, so behavior, and what one feels or thinks inside mental processes are the two key factors that you need to know about the basis of psychology.